Welcome back everybody to Old Folks TV. Today we're in the shop because it's super duper windy and looks like it's gonna rain a little bit and uh, nothing really I can do outside so we're gonna continue our distributor tech. Uh, you might remember in a past episode that uh, we cleaned up one of these, actually this one, a uh, German 09 and we put the electronic points in there and we showed you guys kind of how to disassemble them and get them nice and clean so they, they spin nice and they run good. Um, so we're gonna continue that and I will show you as promised how to set the basic timing parameters and we're gonna do it with the electronic points because that's what I have in the bus right now. Um, I don't have any actual points, uh, although in the previous episode I did show you how to set your points gap. Um, I still don't have what I need to show you how to do the dwell. Uh, we will get to that if so people need that put it in the comments um, and I can post a video about that too but for right now the electronic points is kind of where everybody seems to be going anyhow so they're much easier to set you don't have to do any of that you just set your timing um, so I will show you on the bus how to do that all we need to really do that is the 10 millimeter I like the deep ones with a little extension um, to loosen up the uh, bracket the clamp and you need a timing light uh, which there's a million different good ones. I can show you a link on one down below in the comments as well. Um, the one I have is a super old, um, it's a snap-on one. I think I got it from my dad when he was done with it. But there's way better versions now. There's digital versions you can set the parameters on and all this kind of fancy stuff. And all the way down to the simple Harbor Freight one that's just a blinking light, um, which I'll explain what those do when we get down inside here and start doing. Uh, so I'm going to show you basically with the motor off and then we'll go through it and I'll show you with the motor on and I'll kind of try to narrate what's going on with it. Uh, so here we go. We're going to jump down here and we're going to get dirty. Of course, I have the degree pulley on uh, here, which it makes it so much easier if you can get your hands on one of those and you can just do that work uh, to get one of those on. It's a little bit of a pain, but once you do it, it makes setting the timing way easier. Um, I'll put a picture here of a stock pulley uh, and I'll notate here and here and here where the marks are or however that lays out. I don't know. Maybe this way. Um, It'll show you mark for top dead center, and I think it's like 5, 7, and 10 degrees advanced or something. I'll, I'll put it all on the picture that's right here, um, so you can see what a stock pulley looks like. For this instance, we're going to use a degree pulley because this is what I have, and this is the easiest way that i found to, uh, to set this timing up. Uh, and this is just, again, a basic set the timing up to make the motor run pretty good. You can go into timing, you know, super detailed and vacuum advanced distributors I, I have friends that are you know really into that and they really do offer a lot more adjustability a lot more uh, performance from that stuff um, the 009 as I've said before isn't really for these motors it's an industrial uh, distributor but this is what we got this is what you know it's probably the most common other than stock distributor to use they're relatively inexpensive um, they're easy to run so we're just going to go with this because this is what many people have um, on their motor. So we've got the uh, degree pulley which has all the different degrees of timing on it. Uh, we've got the distributor here of course, the cap, the rotor, everything there. I'm going to run through this one time with the key off so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. Then we'll run through it again with the key on and I'll show you actually how everything will work uh, with the motor running, how to set the base timing and everything. So first thing to do. We uh, pop the cap off, and if you run your fingernail along the edge of this, right here, you'll find a little notch. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but you can almost always find it with a fingernail. That little notch guy, and I marked mine with a Sharpie, uh, that little notch guy right there is number one. That's where number one, so when this is turned all the way around, that's where number one fires. 
That's important for when you put the distributor in initially. Um, there's a little tiny spring right down here that needs to be in there uh, on top of the timing gear or the distributor drive gear. Um, so make sure that's in there when you put your distributor in, obviously. Put your clamp on. There's one little 13 millimeter back there that you can tighten down so the clamp is solid. And then, uh, let me see here. 10 millimeter. You don't want to over tighten these. Uh, tight enough so where it won't move is good. The more you crank down on them, the more this is going to get warped and uh, eventually they won't work anymore. So you're going to drop your distributor in. You're going to put your fingers on top of this and you're going to kind of wiggle this as you push down. And there's two little teeth that will pop into the gear. And then you know that you're seated. So make sure that's all the way down as far as it'll go. And then while you're holding it, when you come back in here, just give that a little bit of a snug just to hold it so it doesn't push out. That spring's going to want to push it out. So we don't want to have the spring pushing it out. Um, so now you're kind of just in there and then you can set your, I guess it would be called static timing. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know better than me. Um, but what I do, first you get your timing light. You know, this is a, a strobe style timing light. I put the positive on the, uh, on the positive of the alternator little post up here and then you put your negative on a bus you got a ground right here that's handy on a bug you might have to find something else to uh, ground that too got to be a good ground though you want that light to be nice and bright can you take your uh, your sensor here your clip on wire to number one number one is the passenger side towards the front of the car uh, that's your number one so make sure that you get that wire specifically that's the one you want. You just clip that over and shut it. Uh, just, oh, these short little wires on these things. Uh, so then, once you're all hooked up and you know your distributor is in the hole, put your cap back on. Like this. And then, try to fire your motor off. If it fires off, we'll skip to step two. If it doesn't fire off, then uh, you know we'll, we'll go here to this first step again. Uh, you're going to loosen up this just enough to where it, don't ever turn it by the cap too. You want to turn it from down here, you know, just to where it'll turn just a hair. You know, it should be tight, but it should turn by hand. So that way, it, it stays put when you let go of it. Um, and what we can do here, let me go turn the key on. Here, the key's on. The key's on, so we're powered up. I'm going to set our timing light to zero. Oh, we got to rotate the engine. To zero and then you'll turn this and that'll light up do this little blink blink it'll blink so if you turn this to where this is at zero and you turn this until this is at zero you're at top dead center uh, on your, your motor uh, then it should fire off and sound like garbage and then at that point uh, with it running you come down here and you turn your distributor until the light flashes, it's going to flash on a number. Um, seven is, is pretty good to start off with at idle. It should make it idle pretty good. Uh, when that's the case and you're, you're looking good at seven, you come up here and you rev your motor uh, until it stops advancing. And you see what number you have there. Uh, 32 is the most. And this is your mark here is actually the center of the case. You've got this little finger, it's the middle of that finger, the inside here, the direct center of the case. So you want to be at 30, 1, 2, maximum, right there. I like to run mine around 28, uh, 28 to 30. Keeps it running pretty cool. Um, 
they don't they don't get too hot it's hot here in the summertime so you can take you're taking away a little performance but we're talking about a single port 1600 pushing this bus around it's not exactly gonna win a bunch of races uh, so you just basically turn this until you get to 32 when you're pointing this the gun down here at that guy um, you can adjust it that way there's other timing lights this one has the adjustment here I can turn that to my 32 and pull the trigger and then uh, I can adjust this without having to rev it I can adjust my distributor until it reads 32 that's giving me 32 degrees advanced and then you tighten everything down and you turn this back to zero and you check it you pull the throttle down and you put it on zero and you see it should say 32 or 28 or whatever you set it at uh, so that's how I do it you see this has a little flash it'll flash every time that number one fires off uh, so we'll it, I'm sure that was super confusing for everybody uh, so what we're gonna do is I will fire the motor up uh, we're gonna kill the microphone because you won't be able to hear me anyways and I'll just point at stuff and do stuff and we'll run through the whole process again uh, just so you can see it on an actual running actual motor so So you can see when we move this to zero, it would show us what our actual timing was. So it would be 10. You can double check that, or nine, I guess it was. You move this up and you pull the trigger. Now it should say top dead center because you're telling it what you want to have and it'll show you, okay, yes, you're right on it. So then you turn that up to, the, to where the highest it would rev when it completely stops advancing and you see you know what is that okay it was 28 that's where I like it at 28 so I want my maximum advance to be at 28 and then whatever the, the idle one uh, falls on it falls on that's just where it is there is more tunability to it than that uh, some people say these 009s you should always run them at 32 maximum performance yada 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 but uh, it just seems to run a little hotter for me so I dial it back a little bit um, I run, you know, the, the good highest octane I can get uh, just to try and keep those temperatures down. I don't know if it helps, but it makes me feel a little better about it. Um, as far as timing guns go, like I said, this one is probably 40 years old. Uh, it's a pretty simple setup just with the strobe and a trigger. Um, this one is the dial type. Uh, again, it's pretty old. They have newer ones that are digital. You can click it up it'll actually give you a tachometer reading on there if you want to spend some real money and get those like around 100 bucks 150 bucks uh, you can get a 15 dollars one that'll work in a pinch and i always carry not this one but i usually carry one in the bus when i go on long trips um, just in case i need to swap that distributor or check the timing you know sometimes you do have to adjust them on the road uh, adjust the carburetor adjust the timing for elevation you know if i go up to uh, arizona or something high desert uh, or when we go out to Havasu, we, we go across the Continental Divide. It's like super high up. I don't know what the altitude is there, but the elevation, but it's pretty high up. And then we come all the way back down into the desert. You know, you, you kind of have to make these adjustments to make it run right. Uh, so, you know, get you a good timing gun, a 10 millimeter and a, a little ratchet. It's really all you need to just loosen this guy up. Um, it's good to have a wrench to turn this if you really need to like replace the distributor you can turn this until number one lines up with the rotor and then uh, you know follow the steps I just showed you to adjust the timing once you get the engine to start um, you can adjust it um, and then with the stock pulley you know I showed you that picture and then uh, you can see where all the marks are on that so you'll know kind of where to line them up it's a little harder with a stock pulley so again recommend definitely getting a uh, the grief pulley they're not that much money 
Um, but that's pretty much it. That's that's how you set the timing. Um, you know, basic. That's that's how I do it, and I'll run it like that. I mean, that's how I run it. I don't I don't get any fancier than that. So you can do it. You can super do it. It's not that hard. I think even AutoZone will rent these to you for free. Just give them a deposit, and they'll. Uh, you know, they'll just give you one to check it out, and then when you're done, you bring it back, you get your money back. So, definitely easy to do. Um, I know that was a short, little quick one, but everybody was asking, you know, for that. So, we've done distributors from pulling them to cleaning them to swapping the points out for electronic to, uh, you know, getting them in in time. How's it going, man? How's it going? Yeah. I'm back in the van. Thanks, man. I'm actually filming right now. Can I? What, what do you yeah, uh, I'll try and swing by at a better time. Alright, cool, thanks. Guy walk up my driveway trying to sell me stuff. Uh, so anyways, take them out, clean them, put them back together, change them to uh, electronic points, and then uh, get them in and get them timed and get you back running on the road. Keep a spare in the, in the, you know, in your little toolbox, your suitcase, whatever. Fully built, ready to go. You can leave the, uh, that one on that motor but you can leave the clamp on there now that we've got this timed we can go back there and pull that 13 millimeter nut off and we can pull the whole thing with the clamp out as one piece it's timed to this motor so if I'm running down the road and this one you know decides to you know kick out on me and that doesn't run anymore I can just take it out drop the new one in it's ready to go put my plug wires on and connect my uh, points to my coil here negative positive we're back on the road in, in five minutes, you know, time. So if you got the means, definitely get one of those too. Even if it's one of the cheap Chinese ones, you know, that's all you can get for now. For a spare backup, those are okay for a spare backup. And I would put points in it um, just so anybody can run it in their car. So if you come across somebody who's pulled over and broken down and, ah, my distributor doesn't work, you can, you know, you can sell them yours, you can give them yours if you're a nice person, um, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Uh, saves someone from an expensive tow bill and a long night on the side of the road. So keep an extra one pre-time for your motor. They can retime it. I just showed you how to show them. So easy money right there. Maybe they'll give you a few bucks for the help, or you might save yourself a few bucks by doing it, um, you know, and uh, not ruining your trip. So there you go. That concludes distributor tech. Uh, we're pretty much there. If you got any more questions, throw them in the comments. And uh, you know I'm happy to answer them if I can or find the answer for you. We can we can definitely figure it out. Uh, we're gonna do stock carb next. We're gonna take one of these apart, clean it, rebuild it the same way we did the, the uh, distributor. Get it on. I'll show you how to tune it. Um, that's pretty easy too. It's just two little screws for the adjustments on those. So we'll start that one uh, on the next series. But for now, distributors done. Thanks for tagging along on that. Um, hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. Hit the bell icon. Uh, we really appreciate all the comments and all the love we've been getting. Um, if there's something you want to see that's tech related or not tech related, you know, you just want to watch me drive around, I'm down for that too. Let me know in the comments and uh, you know, we can, we can definitely get you people what you need, what you want to see. So this is the channel of the people. <laughs> Check out our friends at VW Life. Uh, they're wrapping up that Harvest Beetle. They're getting into some more different adventures now. Harvest is coming up pretty quick. I gotta get that trophy made uh, for the club choice. I think we're down to like less than a month almost. Uh, I'm very excited about that show. Uh, we have our own show coming up, the Lone Star, round, uh, Lone Star VW Weekend, uh, which is coming up in April. I'll put a link to that, uh, the site. We're still sort of hammering out the details on that, but I'll put that down so you can save the date on those. Uh, for that show, that's in uh, Bastrop, Texas. So we would love to see some of you out-of-state guys come and visit us. Um, so check us out there. I'll put the link again down at the bottom. Get us on uh, Instagram, Texas Old Volks. Get us on uh, Facebook, Texas Old Volks. You can catch all this stuff at oldvolks.club right there. Uh, you can catch all our, our uh, social medias and everything and, and keep up with what everybody's doing and what the gang is, is into. Uh, check us out at volksamerica.com. Get those magazine subscriptions in. We got the Volksmania free magazine that came out. People are loving that. Um, I got a handful of those still ready to give away. So if you want one, let me know. I can send you one uh, for the price of shipping. A couple bucks. Get you a magazine full color. It's awesome. Please support our... Uh, 
our advertisers in that magazine. That's what makes that magazine free for you. Uh, it's it's a good magazine. It's a great magazine actually. And then it comes out in between the Volks America magazine, so you kind of get just constant content coming at you. We got the Volks America YouTube channel. I'll throw that ridiculous link down below. It's huge. We're working on that. We're gonna make that a little shorter. Uh, but I'll put it down there. You can click on that. You can see some of our friends' cars, uh, the features that we do feature Friday. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. <laughs>